Hi, this is Mike with episode 11 of Getting Everyone Moving, sponsored by Palms of Pines Parasports. Tonight, we have another great guest, Jason Hotchkiss. Hey, Jason. Hey there, Mike. Good to, good to be here. Thanks. Yeah, we're glad you're here. So tell us how you became involved in adaptive sports. Sure. Um, well, it, it was, it was uh, kind of tragic like a lot of people who are involved in, in adaptive sports um, can relate. Um, in 2016, my late wife and children were in a, in a pretty terrible car accident uh, not far from our home in Durango, Colorado. And, and uh, um, she unfortunately passed away in the accident and my son Noah, who was 11 at the time, um, became a complete paraplegic um, from, yeah, so he's a T6 paraplegic, yeah. And so um, we were very fortunate in that um, our community, although it's very small, uh, 17,000 has a, a very um, robust adaptive program, primarily focusing around skiing and um, also some other outdoor activities, not so much sports, um, but uh, recreational activities. And so, um, you know, three months after the accident, we were able to get Noah on, on the mountain for his first run. And, um, and it kind of all went from there. Um, so you dealt with a terrible tragedy I mean, just horrific. I mean, how, how were you able, um, so you're a single parent then at that point. I mean, how were you able to, um, you know, help keep your family going and actually get your son involved with adaptive sports? Well, um, you know, you just do it, right? I mean, that's, that's how life is. And, and um, again, I think that's something that you, you find over and over again in the adaptive sports community is, you know, people just adapt. And um, in that case, um, you know, we were, we were always a very active family in sports. And also we were very active in outdoor recreation. So climbing, river rafting, skiing, that's kind of our world where we come from in Durango. And so, you know, we had the Adaptive Sports Association, but we also, we're quickly working on, you know, adapting the raft and trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to be doing these camping trips? And, you know, we start digging into a segue and let, let's figure out how we're going to continue to get out into the outdoors. And, um, and so that's just kind of the way we, we were. I mean, we had young children, and so we were already into outdoor recreation. And a lot of out, outdoor recreation with young children is about adapting, <laughs> you know, how you're going to perform a river trip with a three-year-old. Or, And so we, I think, you know, when we talk about uh, transferable skill sets, um, you know, outdoor recreation really has a lot of that. And that's something that outdoor recreation and adaptive sports have in common is an abundance of transferable skill sets that can kind of apply from sports to school to life in, in, in general. And so, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's right. So have you been involved with coaching then adaptive sports, actually making equipment? What, tell us more about what you do. Sure. Um, I, I'm a, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a, a standby coach. <laughs> um, certainly the other adaptive athletes are much better coaches than I am. 
um, they understand the sport better. But I've I've learned out of necessity because you know we have we have um, we don't have that many in our area um, adaptive athletes. Noah's off in in college, and um, and I'm certainly trying to train up um, more coaches to fill that that spot but in the meantime i'm working with kids and of course you know our closest basketball team um to us when noah was injured was eight hours away um either denver salt lake or phoenix they were all equally eight hours away from us we ended up forming a a, a small team out of albuquerque with some other kids who wanted to play and and um and so that was only four hours away for us. Um, but so, you know, coach by necessity and certainly it, part of the inspiration of tribal adaptive has been that that, that kind of geographical barrier is, is, is huge throughout Indian country. And so we need to try to localize the programming. Now, I'm not familiar with any other kind of tribal adaptive organizations. Um, and I know, you know, looking at some websites that the incidence of, uh, of people with disability amongst Native Americans is, is quite high. Um, how, I mean, how do we get more, um, you know, kind of tribal adaptive organizations going? What, what do we need to do? Well, that's right. I mean, there is no other um, adaptive sports program focused on Indian country and, um, and, and, and that is the exact, um, those obstacles are the ones that we're problem solving for at this point. Um, you, you know, one of the, the most important things early on was to showcase Noah's success and, and the, the world in the Indian country world is, is kind of small. And, and Noah's pretty well known now. And just having that one success story, it, it, it gets out. And so featured in, in the kind of publications that are common throughout Indian country, it starts to make someone say, oh, my nephew could do that, or my grandson could do that, or my son could do that. And we, you know, we get calls from all over the country when there is an accident and, and somebody had heard or somebody had seen. And so we try to keep, um, you know, we wanna showcase those success stories. And we, we've had some other kids have some successes and, and there's other kids, there's a, a young lady up in Washington right now, a Yakima tribal member who's quite good and, and, um, and her story, you know, we're gonna try to try to get more media around it and in Noah wasn't ever comfortable with that and and uh, she's not going to be comfortable with it as well either but we try to we try to really say well it, it's it's really about getting your story out there to help others and and that generally people are open to so talk about your son Noah he's at University of Illinois right yeah He's, uh, he's in his fourth year at University of Illinois and, and uh, they're trying to figure out their season and all the COVID craziness. Um, he's uh, majoring in recreational sports and tourism and then looking to go on to a law degree afterwards. And he's continued to build the uh, nonprofit and build awareness around it with tribal leadership and advocate for it, you know, all across the country, really. And so he's a busy little dude. <laughs> Talk about, you know, he, he was young, right? When he had the accident. I mean, yeah. Talk about, you know, the type of su support that you and other community members, you know, have have given to him to help him, you know, really get to where he is to want to be an attorney. I mean, that's great. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, you, you can't really talk about the success Noah has had without 
mentioning Billy Mills, who Billy Mills was a was the only American to ever win the 10,000 meter. He's a Lakota tribal member, and he's an older. I think he won in Tokyo in I want to say 64, 1964, and he has gone on to raise millions of dollars to help out Indian country and. Um, I think Noah was a sophomore in high school and he was, Billy Mills had decided that he wanted to give 10 youth a year, $10,000 each to, um, to implement their dreams. And, um, and it was just such a, a really powerful concept, right? Because he wanted to empower youth directly and um and noah was part of the inaugural class of that that project and you know we're very proud to say that six years later he selected noah again as a part of a a project called the dream starter gold project in which he invested another $50,000 in continuing the, some of the original people that had, had been selected five, six, for the last, over the last five years to continue to support and build capacity for their visions. And so, um, so he was the, the first one to recognize that like this kid's really onto something and something important. And, um, and then through that, um, you know, Noah's been, been uh, acknowledged in a lot of, of, of pretty major Native American uh, platforms like the National Congress of American Indian and, and a lot of people just, you know, they, it's that, it's a typical thing. They feel inspired by him but they also see a, a drive and a vision that he has and, and really want to support it because it's a problem. Like you said, the, the incidence of disability is significantly higher than the general population. And, um, and the, the obstacles to, to uh, fixing a lot of the problems are, are pretty complex. And so, this is a, a kind of a way of coming at the problem from a different angle. So adaptive sports has that ability to just kind of take the focus off the disability in, in, a, in a sense yeah. and focus it on the ability. And, and, uh, and, and I think it's, that's one of the reasons why it's so effective. What are, um, what are some of the challenges that you know you face with the with the nonprofit? I mean, there's always the you know the sustainability issue, of course, funding. But what are what are some of the other issues that you know you all have faced? Um, I think that I mean there are very common, and and we are. We are, you know, we have started from a small amount of funding and, and very small, um, very um, specific projects to your, as you grow, you need to start to um, really identify where you're going. And, and, and that was a big part of our our funding request to, to running strong for American Indian youth to say is like, we're at this place now where we need to really be doing long-term strategic master planning as an organization. And, and I, I think they really appreciate, appreciated that as, as, a, as a, a, a nonprofit that's been very successful, um, they recognize that in the beginning stages, it is easy to get, you know, carried away with the individual small problems um, that you face, and and you can become so busy and overwhelmed by that that people burn out, yeah. and uh, and so 
acknowledging that th that doing that long term master planning and, and really developing a strong vision and bringing in as many voices as you can to develop that. And, and really, that's hard work. That's hard work developing that strategy. Um, but just kind of bearing down and doing it. Um, that, that, that I think that is, uh, you know, not not a problem, but that that is a rite of passage <laughs> that I think, think it's important for organizations to go through. Yeah. How do you, Jason, how do you, how do you think that we create more inclusion in society? And, and it's not just, you know, people with disability or people with other abilities. It's also, I mean, being Native American, you know, there's that whole layer as well. But, you know, what, what, what are some of the things that you would say we can do to create more inclusion? Um, well, I've had an interesting experience myself, you know, I'm, I'm not Native American. That's just, just, it, on, on Noah's mother is, is okay. Native American. And so, um, but I've had the interesting experience of being like the only white person in the room for a majority of my adult life. And I frequently say, you know, I'm actually the only white person in my house. Um, and, and so um, I think being there, there's, there is a, a, a I think it's important for people to challenge themselves to be outside of their comfort zone or their primary um, to, to, to challenge themselves to be outside of their primary identity. And, and sometimes that can be as a, as, a, as a person with a disability, it may be to be primarily in a, a situation where they are the only one or likewise for somebody with an ability with that's able-bodied to put themselves into a position. I mean, I'm one of those people. I'm I, I'm 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 a strong advocate of inclusion of able-bodied people in adaptive sports um, for that reason. Um, it, it's a that's a very complex question, though. Sure. I think ultimately, you know, we have to we have to challenge ourselves a little bit, though, and and try to try to experience life from from different angles so you absolutely so you know you've had this experience with um i mean with your son you know with your family um and you talk to people who have recently been injured so what are some of the things that you say to them because you know obviously you have an accident you're depressed you're, uh, you know, I'm not doing anything kind of, you know, mode. I mean, how do you encourage people to, you know, get to the point where they want to participate? Bribes, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> We're having, we've been having that conversation. I mean, it's, you know, as a parent, you can do that. And I think a lot of times in, when we're talking about youth, that conversation is with the parents. And, and it's because, you know, I, I think, you know, I'm on the dad side. I'm, I'm probably a little less nurturing, you know. And so I, I was always very forceful that you're going to do stuff. And, and so um, I... I, I think when, when we meet somebody though, we, we try to figure out what they, what they, what excites them and then go with it. And, you know, there, I, I was recently working with a, a DVR, a division of Volk rehab person with one of our athletes and, and that DVR person was telling me, well, you know, I, their philosophy was they will meet them halfway. And I said, there's just no way. That's just like, you know, are you going to accept half pay <laughs> as well? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm looking, I'll, I'll meet the 99% of the way. And that's just kind of where, what it takes. And if I can get 1% and then 3% and then 9% and then 50%, I think that's kind of what it, what it really takes. You're 
just you you have to be kind of empathic and intuitive about what excites them and then really push on on that thing. I like that. Yeah, that's great. I like that. Um, so you have some other children? I do. Yeah. How, yeah. Old, how old are they? I have a 19 year old daughter and then I have a 23 year old stepson who's autistic, high functioning autistic. Um, and, and then I have a 24 year old daughter. And so and how, I mean, how did they deal with, um, you know, Jason, uh, Jason, with your Noah. son, Noah, being yeah. in, you know, having to use a wheelchair for mobility? What, what did they see or do? Or... Well, Noah always credits them quite a bit for um, his ability to, to kind of negotiate life because he always says, particularly his youngest sister, he said, she just never treated me differently. We just fought the same. She pushed me the same. She, she pushed him in a lot of ways. And so, um, and, and, and David as well. And so I think, I think, you know, they've become really cool people in a lot of ways because they've been around the adaptive sports community. And, and actually my youngest daughter who was in the same accident, she's, she's got a, a, a physical disability um, that's, that's minor, but it, it's, you know, qualifies her to play Paralympic type sports from the same accident. And, um, and so that's been just being around the adaptive sports community, I think is good. <laughs> For anybody, it it's just it it it's just full of so many cool people, incredible people, um, real life, <laughs> real life situations. Real it it just I think it it's very educational. So as we come to the end of our interview, um, do you have any final words? Anything you'd like to say to? You know, the able-bodied community about, you know, people with varying abilities and all that? Um, well, in it, it, to the able-bodied community, I'd say come out and play ball because we need you. <laughs> we need more players. We need, we need to be able to play 10 on 10. You're going you're gonna to learn that these sports are really fun. They're really difficult. Um, and you'll, you will you'll learn a lot about um you'll 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 learn a lot about uh people's experience in life and and i think you'll gain respect for that have you played any uh adaptive sports i love to play i love to play i'm terrible but i really <laughs> love, I love i love and and but i but to tell you know to be fair i'm getting better yeah. and, and and like i've had to really apply myself in the and then as you get a little bit better, you're like, oh, I want to do this more. It's, it's, it's a really fun sport, so. <laughs> Jason, it's been a pleasure to uh, meet you and talk with you. Thank you so much. Likewise, Michael, and thanks for everything that you guys are doing as well. And, and Southern Arizona Adaptive Sports has been a godsend for us in all the day chairs that we've been able to get out to people it's just been awesome. And your new organization over there, we can't wait to work with you. Thank you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks likewise. again. All right.